Now we're going to do the same motion, but if we go to a punch, we don't really leave that alignment. So we don't go as full, right? So all we're going to do is exaggerate, wing open the elbow, and then bring it back down into alignment. And then we shorten, inflate, draw. So we're using the deltoid, the shoulder, to inflate. There doesn't need to be a lot of flexion, although there can be. It can be, it can be that small. This action, bringing it in and dropping. And then I hook, I screw the now. So big, but not too hard at first. Just see what that feels like. Feel what that feels like, right? So as I come in, I can screw before, during, after. Each one's different. Mm -hmm. And then as I tighten it, I see what that feels like. Yeah. Horrifying. If I make it super tight, just that. It's like I'm throwing a rock across a river, whipping a playing card. It's that action, very tight. It doesn't take much force. Good alignment, just that. So before we worked on all the stuff we can do open, and now we come tight. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. That's it. Lead hand is the same. Inflate, hit. Whoosh, whoosh. That's it. And so your elbow is kind of like a hammock, and it has the ability to twirl and whirl. So I'm literally just arriving in structure. If I see that that's arriving in structure, and I time my pivot, now it becomes very powerful. Okay, so that's it. Make sense? So if you have the option, think of a conventional sporting uppercut. A lot of times guys deliver an uppercut, that's fused. They're trying to use the hip, but not getting much shoulder. But now if I use that, your arm's through, and then it's not hitting. What makes it hit? My hip. Yeah. Brutal. It's like you're okay. okay. This way. That's all I need. Tight and back. And back. So before we head down, now we have that. Imagine I'm a two knuckle puncher. By the time I arrive, there's no contact. Even if I'm three, I'm kind of, I'm not getting all of them. I'm just getting the ball. So I think the best way to hit his chest here, because it's a high target, is kind of that downward grip. So I still want to come into that compression. I just don't want to do it on the t-shirt, and I don't want to do it before. I want to do it kind of when my two knuckles are touching his heart. It's inside, yeah. Look at the difference. Too early, punching his shirt, not getting his nipple. Inside, no rush, yeah. So look how slow it is. That, that's just my elbow, yeah. And then I go whoosh. And so when you add the hip, yeah, that's what you want. You want. See that on the neck? Remember, we're punching this because we can take it. If I'm fighting him, I'm not punching the chest. Yeah? <laughs> Targets I'm looking for, hip flexor. Says, imagine that. That's already shitty. Do it here. Oh, look at that. That is nothing here. Here? That's as hard as you want to go. There is a ligament. I hope that's a ligament. Right here. <laughs> and it's a big ligament. But if I keep that right in the pocket, moosh. So if I go, yeah, horrible. If I start to come up to the neck, that kind of whoosh power, this nobody would want. That's, that's as hard as you want to take comfortably. And that's this. If I give that up the neck, it's already too much. If you give everything you've got, this is fine. That's not. Yeah? So think of where you're hitting. If I'm going maybe to the side of the face, I don't have to go much harder than that. Have affectation. Right? But I'm rarely, you can hit the plexus, but I'm certainly not going to say, I'm fighting this guy, he's angry, full shot on the plexus and expect him to drop. I'm going to go hip flexor or pubis, neck. And then the left side of the head, that's what you want. Back of the head, imagine this, and then I screw it. Whack! And really cast it into it. Look at that impact like this. You can see the vector. Where is it pointing, right? And depending on when I screw and how deep I am, the vector will change. That's why if I go principally there and then rotate after, it's going down on a 30, 40 degree angle. Yeah? It's different. I may touch, but now let's say I, I drop my elbow and I apply my principal force horizontal. That's more likely to walk him back. Not going to affect his balance, it's going to walk him back. So if I need to send him to the wall, I will send him to the wall. Got you? Let's switch off. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I swear, I'm trying to go nice, right? So, See, I'm going to send it down, and then I screw. Versus send it back, and then I screw. Yeah? If now I do all of my twisting and it planted here, again, I'm doing three degrees, it could be 15 different switches, yeah? I'm going to go whoosh, and now I want to send it out of the back of the neck. 
Same punch, you saw there's no more power, it's very soft. Why? Because when I send down, stiffest human in the world can still bend the legs off their hips. Yeah? And so you have all of these movements to get rid of the force. I send it straight back. Most people don't have a lot of mobility here. It catches me. Everything stays. I send it up here. Most people have even less here. It stays stuck. So when I start to punch, let's say, big guy, look at the structure. Got mass. If I send it right in here, that's where he wants it. See? See how it flexes? So what I need to do is send it to corners, to the shoulder, and then it's harder for him to deal with. Scapula. Right? And then when he braces, it helps me. If I send it always like this, that's what he's made to do. That's what he's made to take. If he's like that, already there's tension here. If I go up to the neck, it's harder to deal with. Right? <laughs> Every human has that. Bigger guy, it's even worse. Because I'll fucking wail on this, and when I when I hit him. You can see, right? Look at his hips. As big as he is, he has very loose hips. That's why we do the tailbone. If I walk through life like this, and then I get hit in the stomach, I got nothing else to flex with. If I'm stable, oh, you always have that. But you always have that to do. It's a life shift. It's just an inch. That's what the wave is. Deformation coming back.